Hey everyone. Uh, hello. Today's video is all about the energies of August, along with a general reading for those of you tuning in to use and apply to your own life as you see fit. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Tamara Childs. This is my channel. I am a professional intuitive and an empath coach. I work a lot with sensitive people who are getting interested in owning their own power their power of attention, focusing their energy and coming into the self-realization that that brings so they can live a life they love, what I call your inspired life. So welcome. So August, you know, we enter into August with a lot of retrograde planetary energies. This, this influence intensifies the internalization of changes that have already been put into motion, you know, on, on August 1st here, we've already had the lunar eclipse on the 27th, uh, which is really sweeping things out of your life that are outdated, that are no longer appropriate, that you can't build with, that are not healthy, that are not viable. So there's been a little bit of cosmic surgery happening. And I want to say more change anyone because that is what it, we are in the midst of change. This is like a whole cycle of change and it is still eclipse season. And August brings sort of a continuing feeling like that you're getting insights related to major changes that are happening for you in your life. And this is happening. I think sometimes it's really helpful to remember that the changes you're going through Everyone is experiencing the same intensity. So just keep that in mind and allow yourself to really be gentle with both yourself as you go through this sort of uh, uh, moving out of the cocoon process and also recognizing that everybody, the guy at the hardware store and the plumber and the and your best friend, everyone is going and experiencing these changes in their own way, in their own um, sort of constellation of their own lives. So compassion is really important this month uh, because everything is a little bit half-baked. We're still not out of the oven. We're still working on what transformation or metamorphosis you are in. Uh, one of the themes of August is wisely letting go of those things that no longer serve. So a lot of us after the lunar eclipse, we've just been emptying out old attachments and ways. Um, some of this is coming through sort of a stark realization about what is actually viable or valuable in present time. You may have been asking yourself, well, this relationship, this work situation, this living situation, is this even serving me presently? And I think the lunar eclipse was especially difficult for a lot of us because what it was asking us to let go of was everything familiar, you know, everything that we felt uh, very attached to from the past, because there was a lot of past time signatures to that lunar eclipse that that made us feel like, oh my God, I'm letting go of this whole identity pattern. In August, an element of fate is in the air, as well as this sort of disorienting feeling, this moment between eclipses that you're experiencing. If you're listening to this, I'm sure you are. And it's kind of similar to the space between two rungs on a ladder. If you're climbing a ladder, those of you who've ever been on a ladder, you know there's another step before you, but before your foot touches it, you can't feel anything firm under your foot. You can't feel it. And that's kind of how I describe this moment between eclipses. It's like being in midair and it feels uneasy because we don't want to feel like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, but we do because we're still up in the air and all the pieces haven't come down yet. And that's okay because good things are coming. So one of the good things that is coming is the August 11th solar eclipse. This is the third eclipse this summer. There was a solar eclipse in uh, July, then a lunar, and August brings yet another solar. So it's like new beginning, letting go, new beginning again. And this brings destined new beginnings because that is, uh, you know, the eclipses work with the nodes. And that has to do with where our soul is evolving toward. So right now, listening to this, marinate on the idea that 
what is meant for you right now may feel a little unfamiliar because it's actually something new. You might also be aware, kind of at the edge of your awareness of possibilities, but you're not sure what to do about them. And that's okay, too. We're just right now, we're just looking at the lay of the land. We're kind of looking at the landscape and calling it what it is, because I find that anxiety often comes up when I don't name something. But when I name it, I can let it go. So I'd like to offer that to you as well. If there's something you're feeling that's percolating at the edges and you are feeling like, you know, I feel this change, you know, I'm feeling like a vacuum where my social sphere used to be, like it's just not feeding me anymore. Just name it, accept it, and let the emotional body do the completing of the releasing of that that the lunar eclipse was trying to help us with. So one of the things that I'm saying about August is there's help. Because eclipses remind us that the soul is the one in charge of our evolution. And sometimes the part of us, I'll call it the ego, there's nothing wrong with an ego, we all get one, it's part of our physical, you know, when we come into a physical body, we need that ego to help us um, draw the lines for our, our identity. But what the ego wants to hold on to tightly, the soul can dissolve with ease. And I want you to really remember that this month. If feel, if things feel slow because of the retrogrades and there's this anxiety coming up and also, um, you know, your orientation is radically changing because new circumstances are headed your way and the part of you that's intuitive can feel those changes coming, but you can't yet feel them firmly under you. Um, just know that life is on soul time. And so you can let any anxiety rest and surrender the process to this higher directive because we're all upgrading our systems right now. It's a, a really exciting time. And just see it that anything that you're letting go of is for the best, that um, it's clearing the way for you to have more of what you truly want. You know, there's a saying that when God says no, um, God has several answers. One is yes, or yes, but not yet, or no, there's something better. I think that's the saying. And I feel with eclipses, it's often no, there's something better. So please take that in this month and see how that works for you. So this is sort of an experiment doing these sort of audio podcast things. But I drew some cards and I'd like to share them with you. And I'd like for you to th consider how they apply to your situation in your life. And the first card I got was the lover's card. This is a, a card um, connected with Gemini energy, with choices, with duality, with uh, black and white, with um, the lower and the higher, sort of a split screen in your, your awareness. And it also, of course, has to do literally with new love coming into your life. Consider what for you this might mean. What would new love that feels very true to you, whether this is a romantic attachment or whether this is actually just a new mate coming in, like a new a, a friend mate, um, a new person who really gets you, because I feel like I'm doing this reading for a lot of folk who have been feeling disenfranchised from um, the people who really get them, you know, kind of like your soul, soul people, your group of people, the people who really understand who you are. And if you felt like you're nobody really gets you, I feel like this card is telling us that there is something going to be activated or ignited that makes you feel passionately alive and loved. So however you see that, whether it's appropriate that that be romantic for you or in your social sphere, you know, typically this in the Tarot, this is a very personal card that has to do with passionate romantic love between a couple of people. But it also has um, this sense about it of choice and the sense that um, it's kind of like the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. And it has to do with um, when you experience the intensity of being seen and heard and acknowledged and loved, does that only happen within the context of a certain type of relationship? Or could you receive that in more spheres of your life? A second card I get is the Queen of Wands. And this is a commanding 
feminine presence of fire. This is a queen that doesn't put up with anything. This is a queen who's ready to lead. This is a part of you who's ready to take leadership in some form in your life and not put up with less than you absolutely know you deserve. And by the way, we have another queen in this reading. So this there's a lot about deserving and getting the high road and taking the higher octave of a situation and only allowing the best to come to you. I really get that she is telling me that for those of you listening, you need to kind of uh, be strict, be like a queen. Be like a queen and command this part of your life. Whatever part is coming up for you as I'm talking, that's the part. Let that fiery, I will take nothing less than what I deserve. Let that come to you now in August because it's an appropriate energy. And to me, of course, a fire queen is very Leo and we're in the Leo time. The next card I got is judgment. Hmm, there's so much in this reading right now about August being a time when we have to let our higher self be the judge and the executive in charge of our life. And it's about this renewal of spirit. In other words, there may have been a part of your life where you have allowed things to kind of slide into something less conscious than who you really are, or less than who you are. And the judgment card really requires us to wake up and choose the higher path. Again, that's sort of a repeating message for this reading. I, I never know what I'm going to get, but I really feel like for a lot of you listening, um, Another thing that's coming in, in just intuitively is say you are looking for a new job right now or a new uh, activity or new social sphere. It's very important to match that high level, that queen of wands, that high quality energy. You know, it's been said that we are each a combination of the five people that we keep company with. So who you keep company with is very important as far as keeping your vibration high, because I feel like that's a strong message for us in August, is that we're going to have the opportunity for new situations to show up where we have to be our best and in our highest vibration. Otherwise, we'll feel like will feel like we're the 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 housekeeper for the for the queen and will feel like oh I'm you know Cinderella I'm not ready for the ball and I feel like there's a a need for us to really be in our most regal selves in order to lead forward in life and play the role that we really want to play moving forward um, I also got okay another queen, and she's the queen of pentacles. Now, this is a lady who knows what's of value to her because she's grounded in her body, and she's not, you know, running around with her head spinning. You know, she's not a chicken running around with its head off. She's She's discerning, and she looks at the lay of the land, and she decides ahead of time, like, what's my map, what's my plan, and what fits in with this, and what's good enough for me, and what's on the plan, and what, what can I, what's valuable. So she is an earthy influence that we have this month, and she's telling us, don't waste your time with stuff that's not good enough for you. Don't waste your time with stuff that's not on the level for you. Again, all of these cards are very much speaking in concert together. Um, for those of you listening who are in divine timing, listening to this, and this is your reading. The final card that I got for August is the world, the universe in the Crowley deck. I love this card because sometimes there's a poignancy to this card. It's not the easiest card because it's about allowing things to come to their fullest expression or that things are coming to their fullest expression. You naturally have to let go of what no longer serves, as I said in the very beginning of this um, podcast. So there's a little bit of sadness that may come. And I'm just really getting this with the world card that those of you who are moving to new levels, you absolutely some new doors are going to be opening for you this month. And it's up to you to be in the right space to say yes to opportunity when it shows up. And to allow yourself to process enough the sad feelings that come up when you realize you're shutting a door 
on things that you're letting go of, things that you know are no longer your taste and they're no longer on the right level for you. It's okay to notice, to be discerning about levels and to see where you are rising because that's what eclipses are all about. They're about closing the old doors and rising into the new space like a phoenix. So this is our August reading. It's uh, a short one, but hopefully it will hit the spot for some of you listening. Please write me about how this is going for you. If this has helped you, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. I thank you so much for listening. If you would like a reading, you can check out the links below. I do have a 30-minute special, and that is available all about the August energies for you. If you're interested in that, just click on that. You can also visit TamaraChilds.com for more information about me and what I do. So thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing, sharing, and being a part of this world. Have a wonderful August. I'll talk to you soon.